It's quite common to see a laptop being connected up to a monitor and a wireless keyboard or mouse and being used like a desktop computer. But instead of using one of these, what if we use one of these? Can it be used like a desktop computer? Let's find out. First we're going to need a cable to connect the phone up to the monitor. I've got here an MHL cable with an HDMI port on one end, micro USB port there to charge the phone while it's being used. If you don't have a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard you can get something like this uh, which has an HDMI port. Also has the port there for charging as well as a USB port there so you can connect up a USB powered mouse and keyboard. Let's go ahead and connect this up. Once I've got it all connected up, there are a couple of other things I'll need to do in order to prepare it for use like a desktop computer. Obviously a desktop computer has a mouse and keyboard so we'll need to go ahead and connect those up. The home screen and the app drawer are shown in a portrait orientation. Some phones have an option to flip this into landscape, but on this one we don't. So what we'll need to do to get rid of those horrible black bars either side is install a launcher from the Google Play Store. There is a huge range to choose from, but not all of them support a landscape orientation for the home screen and app drawer. Um, so you may need to experiment, but the one I'm going to use is called Next 3D Launcher. So here it is, I've now got it installed, and as you can see it's taking up the full real estate of the monitor. The next thing we need to do is get rid of the on-screen keyboard. As we're using an external one, we don't need this taking up valuable screen real estate. In order to do this, we just need to download an app called Null Keyboard. Once we've got it installed, just go into your settings and set this as the default keyboard. Now that everything's set up, we're pretty much ready to go. So here I've fired up Google Chrome, and I'm now surfing the internet, just like I would on a desktop computer. So the experience is very similar, you can even watch embedded YouTube video clips. And speaking of YouTube, the YouTube app also works quite nicely on this setup. But today, it is rather overshadowed by this. Before we go any further, I should probably mention what the mouse controls do in Android. So by scrolling uh, up and down, you can scroll up and down on web pages um, or menus or uh, whatever you've happened to have open. A left click is the same as touching on the screen, so it will activate whatever you whatever you click on. A right click um, is the same as the back button on your Android phone, so by clicking the right button it will take you back to the previous menu. And then um, in the center button or your mouse scroll wheel, if you do a long press on that, it will bring up the task manager, so you can select the apps that you have open at the time and a single click on the same um, sensor button will take you back to the home screen. So what about if you want to actually do some productivity on your smartphone? I'm going to show you this application called Polaris Office 5. Now this uh, application is compatible with Microsoft Office. So not only can you view uh, Word, Excel and PowerPoint uh, files, you can also create and modify them. So let's first go into the Word processor. Now with this I'd actually hate to have to use this on a daily basis. Uh, it's not very intuitive, it's not very smooth, um, it's not what you would experience on a desktop computer, but in a pinch you could use it to get by. Uh, one of the problems is that um, all the menus are designed for a smaller screen, so on a large external monitor everything looks kind of massive and kind of chunky. Um, and the page itself, in order to get enough on, you have to zoom right out. Um, and then you get these horrible grey bars either side. I uh, wish we could actually fit two or three pages on the screen at one time uh, when it's in this sort of an, a desktop environment. There certainly are a lot of options that you can play around with, but if you are used to Microsoft Office, you may find this a little bit frustrating. Um, it does take a little bit of time to learn to use this, but we have to remember this is running on a phone, so in that respect, it is pretty powerful. 
Next we'll have a look at the PowerPoint equivalent and this one here I actually think works quite well on this sort of a setup. Uh, it's quite intuitive um, and easy to use and navigate. And then lastly is the spreadsheet. Now on the phone, if we zoom right out, uh, the text here gets so tiny that you can't actually read it off the phone screen. But on the larger screen, it's quite usable. So it's quite good that we can get so much um, data on the screen at one time. Now keeping in mind that this is running off a phone, it is a pretty powerful package. But if you are used to uh, spreadsheets like Microsoft Excel, you may find this a little bit difficult to get used to. If you're serious about productivity, another option is you could look at installing a desktop operating system on your phone so that you can run full desktop applications. And in this example here, I'm running Linux with a full version of LibreOffice so it's a full desktop application, um, but I'll be covering that in another video, going over the pros and cons of this. Um, but for the moment, we're only looking at Android and Android native apps. Now some phones like this uh, Galaxy phone and some LG phones and uh, even some Sony phones, they have an option where you can run multiple applications on the screen at one time. So we're gonna have a look at the multi window mode on this Samsung device and um, see how it works. Now for media consumption this works quite nicely. You can watch a video clip on one side and maybe read um, the internet on the other side. So it works fine for media consumption but what about productivity? Maybe you wanted to do a cut and paste um, from one application to another. Well it's not quite as easy as it would be on a desktop computer. You can't simply just cut and then go to the other application and paste. Um, it does take a little bit of um, working around and it's a little bit frustrating and uh, not very intuitive. Something else that you might do on a normal desktop is scanning and printing. Well, you can do that on a phone as well. So I'm going to scan the cover of a notebook and once it's been scanned in, we can then do other things with it so we can print it out or we can open it up in an image editor and modify the image itself. Something else that's quite typical on a desktop computer is gaming. While well, mobile phones are getting more powerful and the graphics are also getting quite impressive, um, so it's something that can be achieved as well. If you enjoyed this video, uh, we'll be doing another video where I'll be looking at running a desktop operating system on the smartphone and running full desktop applications as well. So if you want to check that out, uh, be sure to stay tuned.